hi it's grace welcome back to my channel i hope that you're all doing really really well and welcome to another reading vlog if you know anything about me if you've watched my channel you might know that i love when other people decide what books i read i have a whole series every month about you choosing my books um and it's because i'm terrible at making decisions and i love getting recommendations and so for this video i have one of my booktube bezies book hottie original the artist formerly known as let's talk about books baby hannah may choosing what i read in this vlog i've got two books that she has gone out on a limb for thinks i will absolutely love books that she's absolutely loved and we're gonna put it to the test and see if i also love them i feel like most of you will know hannah her channel is amazing we have a really really similar reading taste and yeah i speak to her every day i'm obsessed with her i should have met her in real life but miss rona said no and Alex got COVID and I had to isolate. But anyway, the bond is still there, whether or not I've seen her in corporeal form. And I'm very excited to test out the two books that she's chosen for me. She did actually give me three recommendations for this video, but um, one, I just don't know if I'll have time to read three books, and two, when I say she gave recommendations for this video, I'd say it was about four months ago. She was like, you need to do a video that's this, and then I've sat on it until now. So let's talk about the two books. I'm sat in a very weird position, like just the white wall, the plug socket, although it does have a USB port, so don't even worry about it, but I'm sat on my bedroom floor. The first book that comes hand recommended is Memorial by Brian Washington. This is one of Han's favourite books, I think, that she's read this year. I know Brian Washington is like an absolute favourite writer of hers. And I've had this book for a while. I got it for my birthday and I need to get around to reading it. I have read Lot, which was Brian Washington's like short stories. They were like interconnected short stories. And I wanted to love that, um, but I didn't love it. I liked the writing, but it didn't quite like come together for me as a whole piece but then this was when i was a bit of a short story hater and i'm off that train now I'm a sh i love a short story now so maybe that was kind of unfair to judge that by this but this does sound really really appealing to me this is a novel and i think i'm gonna really like it it centers around two men who have been in a relationship for about five years and i do love me a relationship dynamic and i'm pretty sure one of them finds out that his estranged father is like ill so goes back to osaka i think in japan and leaves the other man at home but the first man i really should have used names to make this less confusing mike goes to japan but it turns out mike's mother was meant to be visiting so then she is left with henson the other guy benson the other guy and i think we follow them like separately as they're off doing these two very different things but it's also about their relationship i think that sounds really really interesting i love the idea of like meeting some your mother-in-law basically for the first time by yourself i think that's rife for some fun stuff um I think it's going to be a lot about like identity as well when Mike goes back to Japan. So yeah, I'm excited about this. I do have high hopes. I feel like on the one hand, I didn't love Lot and Han did. Then on the other hand, I did like his writing and I'm very keen to get into a novel. So this is book number one that we will be testing out. Book number two, I have this on my Kindle, is Asylum Road by Olivia Suchet. Another book that Hannah has loved and has not stopped telling me since she read it that it is such a me book, which... We love to hear and then Jalen actually read it the other day and was like yeah this is a grace book why haven't you read it yet and i was like i don't know but i will i promise again this has kind of a romantic relationship at the center of it i think it says that a couple drive from like london to provence and the woman thinks that maybe the relationship is ending but then we're not really sure it sounds like it's gonna have some good like eerie creepy vibes or like tense romantic relationship dynamics which i love i'm very here for that and also another layer is that our main character i can't remember her name escaped sarajevo and she was a child um and so i think it's a lot about like the balkans war and like the conflict there and about her as an adult like reflecting on that i believe she does in fact go back to bosnia in the course of the book and it says it's like talking all about boundaries um and she, her struggle with expecting security and i think it sounds really really interesting in a way there's some similar vibes in terms of both being about kind of about romantic relationships both about returning to somewhere perhaps and looking at your identity but i think they're pretty different books and um, i've also heard that the food descriptions in here are really good which i love and i've heard that asylum road is like really really tense and like gripping which i also love so we have high hopes they're the two books. We're going to test them out over the next few days uh, to see if I like them. And I hope I do. And that me and Hannah can continue to be friends. You may wonder why am I sat here on the bedroom floor. And that's because I came upstairs to film this clip. And then this happened. And I've been really excited 
um, because today is the 1st of September and I'm not like an, an autumn lover, but like when it's grim and outside, I was really excited to get cozy and read my book and maybe light a candle. And now the bloody sun has got its hat on. So yeah, maybe no candles just now, but I have finished work for the day and I am going to pick up my first book, which I think, which is going to be Memorial because of course my Kindle is not charged. So I'll have to remember to charge it while I'm reading this. But yeah, I'm gonna pick this up now. Okay, so I've read the first 100 pages, but first, oh, look who's back from the festival. Hey! I have a friend now, um, Alex made dinner, and it is a pad thai, one of our favorite meals. I can actually cook it myself, but yes, very excited to, to eat this stuff. Haven't we both just had the best days at work? <laughs> Isn't living life with a job fun? Hola, had my pad thai, it was delicious still hungry so yeah i'm 100 pages into memorial and i'm definitely enjoying it because i love the writing it's so kind of not saying everything it's really brief like you're not getting a huge amount into our characters minds in fact grace let's just take a step back I'll tell you what it's about so it's about a couple called benson and mike we read it from benson's perspective benson is a black man who has been in a relationship with Mike, who is Japanese but was kind of brought up in America, they've been together for like four years and at the start of the novel, Mike's mother is coming over from Japan to stay with them and then Mike's like, uh, no worries, by the way, gonna actually go to Japan because my dad's dying, even though like I don't like my dad because him and my mum had a really bad relationship but she'll probably be there so like my mum's just gonna live with you for like mm, two months Um, and you kind of get the feel that Benson and Mike's relationship has not been amazing recently um and so benson's kind of left living with mitsuko who's mike's mom uh and they have never really well they've never met before and she's not the the warmest uh gal but neither's benson like that's what i was going to say before his narration is quite cold he doesn't really give a lot up um he's definitely telling us about like his relationship and his family life um he's also had quite a tumultuous family life with his parents who divorced and his dad is an alcoholic who was quite abusive but even though he's like telling us about that stuff, we never really feel like we're getting how he feels. He's he's really keeping us at a remove. Um, but despite that, I really like the writing. I think it's an interesting narration style. I think the writing's really tight. The plotting's really good. We're getting like just enough introspection and just enough kind of what is actually happening plot, I suppose. I also think it's a really interesting setup. Like benson living with mitsuko and i'm like hoping they have a little bit of a i don't know that, that they do they are starting to get to know each other a little bit more like they don't really speak to each other a huge amount mitsuko is kind of rude to benson there's potentially some like racist overtones there or she's not she's not bothered that mike's gay but she's obviously not like thrilled about it but they started to bond over like food because she loves cooking and mike also loves cooking he works as a chef but yeah mike's in japan and their relationship is very strained um at the start it kind of felt like i'd say like the majority of the characters in this book seem just very unhappy and at the start i was like oh is mike a bit of a dick but actually it just seems like everyone is unhappy and there's a lot of gray area i would say like there's not really good guys or bad guys benson has struggled in his relationship because mike wanted to explore polyamory and basically having an open relationship and benson didn't really want to and we get the the sense that Mike did anyway but then Benson is a terrible communicator and also potentially not the best boyfriend and so you are a little bit like why are you two together but then Benson will give us little moments of over the past four years when they were really close and we kind of understand that Benson's a very troubled potentially damaged young man who finds it very difficult to to have intimacy in his relationships because of his parents and he works as a like childcare, like kind of like a, a nursery and with young children and I really like the exploration of his relationships with some of these young people, particularly one young boy. Um, and so yeah, I have no idea how the story's gonna go, if it's gonna continue to be a bit of a bleak story about people who are not in happy situations, if we're gonna get some redemption, I'm not really sure, I don't really mind. And I would say that Lot was equally a story about quite a lot of unhappy people in, in very difficult situations and it was kind of bleak and, and this book is bleak, but because it has that restraint in the writing it's not like an overload of emotion it feels quite emotionless but you just get the sense that maybe things aren't great so that's where i am at the moment like i say enjoying it 100 pages in it's about just under 300 pages so yes i might keep reading it now i think um but yeah interested love the cover as well i think the cover is great hate the paperback cover 
this one is beautiful. Off to get my morning coffee. Not that I get one every day, but today I need a coffee. <laughs> acquired um i put a jumper on because i was like it's september and then the sun came out we're in a weird we're in a transitional time also i got my nails done on tuesday so i'd show you them um not the most autumnal color really but i love them and because i usually go like five to six weeks between nail apart appointments because my nail technician is literally a genius like i had them on in a lockdown for i want to say like three months and they didn't ship but because i go long between appointments I forget what it looks like to have nails that aren't massively grown out and it's nice. So yeah, last night I read more of Memorial and I got up to page 200. So quite soon after the, just got a fright, <laughs> my computer being like, why aren't you working? So quite soon after the 100 page mark, we switch from Benson's perspective to Mike's perspective while he's in Japan. So Mike goes to Japan to kind of care for his father who is dying. Mike's parents moved from Japan to America and lived there for a while and then his parents split up and his dad went back to Osaka and then his mum did as well like separately and so he goes back to Japan but obviously he's just asked his mum you kind of find out um that he was like oh you should come to spend time with me when he find out his dad was dying he was like let's be together but then he's like oh no I need to go see my dad so like no wonder Mitsuko's a bit pissed off and I really like the scenes in Japan and um, Mike's father owns a bar and so we spend a lot of time in the evenings in this tiny little bar and um, it just feels very like, feel very much like I'm there and there's all these regulars who come in every day and it's really building a picture of like a little slice of life and I, I really like that. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying that. Mike has a very um, difficult and different relationship with both of his parents and that's something that is really coming up in this section of the book. His father was violent as Benson's was um, and so that's kind of something that they'd bonded over or at least having dysfunctional families but then Benson was middle class. Mike was very, you know, they were, had nothing but then Benson is like, well I'm black so that cancels it out so they're really at odds with each other and throughout this you're seeing how kind of they both had difficult lives and the ways in which they tessellate and then don't you do see though i would say some of the more like loving relationships at the start of all the loving moments in benson mike's relationship and um, mike's kind of telling the story about how they met and how they got together but then you also see that it has always been quite a violent relationship um but yeah back to the parents thing i'd say a lot of mike's part of this story is about his relationship to his parents his father is dying and yet they still have a very strained relationship but his father's getting weaker and weaker and we learn about his mother and, and also kind of centrally the way they each feel about his sexuality um, and he kind of has like a cold acceptance from his mother. His dad is a lot more kind of angry about it, aggressive about it but they kind of come to some semblance of living together in his dad's final months um, at the point I'm at now that's still what's happening but yeah I think it is really again very quite sad and bleak um but feels very honest and very raw about parent-child relationships so yeah still very much enjoying it i think the writing's really good i imagine we're going to go back to benson at some point but yeah we'll see i am now going to work today i'm recording another event for durham book festival that i am hosting like chairing which i'm really excited about because it's abigail dean who wrote girl a and catriona ward who wrote the last house on needless street which are both like thrillers that i read this year and loved so i'm really excited about that but but obviously it's kind of a bit nerve-wracking like are these questions gonna be enough to fill the time and you know but i'm excited it should be good i love those books and i'm really interested just to hear them talk about them so i'm gonna do that but i don't know is this an appropriate view in the background when i filmed um a different one a translated fiction one the other day i like moved my mac into the living room um so that my bookshelves are in the background which is a bit faff on it's a bit like is the sun gonna come in also my internet went terrible yesterday morning when i was trying to record another event that i wasn't in thankfully um so i have to wire my macbook up and then i'm like if i wire it into the living room what if it slips out it's a whole thing so at some point I will take a lunch break to kind of decompress and I think I'll try and get this book finished then. I've got like 60, 70 pages left. Um, and then yeah, I'm recording at two o'clock. So we'll see. Doing a cheeky lateral flow before I socialize this weekend. Doesn't everyone just love sticking that on their nose? 
Ew. Okay, so I'm nearly finished Memorial. It was a little bit longer than I thought it was, so I need to finish it after work, but I've tricked Zoom into thinking that I'm in a nice office. Like a normal, I can't, it basically will show this cute little thing with the book there and this little plant and this little picture. When really, it's a washing machine. Um, but I'll be like, mm, yeah, tell me more, tell me more about that. And I think it looks pretty legit. I think it'll be good. I'm excited to chat to the authors. I really love the books. And yes, I'll see you after work. Welcome to this Durham Book Festival event. Hello, I'm on the floor. It is a floor day. My recording actually went so well. Katrina Ward and Abigail Dean were so lovely and so interesting and they'd read each other's books and really loved each other's and we just had such a good conversation. Feel very good about the event um, and I would say if you haven't read those two books and you are someone who likes a thriller, mystery vibe, but then also it's like they both go a lot deeper that they're a lot about trauma. Would highly recommend those two books. Love them both. Um, so yeah, that went really well, but this week has just been um how horrible um just really stressful at work um and just stressful completely like i don't know if mercedes is in renegade or what but everything is just not working i was trying to get my covid pass like my nhs covid pass because me and alex are trying to go on holiday um and i had my middle name down wrong it was like a boy's name and I was like, it's not my name and then i got a new like bank card like a revolut card because my friend was like oh use my link we both get 60 quid i was like i need 60 quid and then it wouldn't verify my identity because when I eventually found out why I was quite offended because they were like that's a provisional driving license like that doesn't count as ID so you know justice for people who can't drive anyway it's just you know one of those weeks where everything's just annoying and not good um but yeah I am finished work and I did finish memorial which is something that is not that isn't annoying and not good I just hit myself in the face of it I enjoyed it I don't think I I don't think it's like a new favorite it's definitely not a five star I I'm sorry Han Interestingly, we were talking about this last night and CJ like isn't a fan. Well, she thought it was fine. Um, and Hannah was like, you are a blasphemer. It's very, I'd say it's really good on like complex human emotions and relationships. Like you're constantly wrong footed. You're constantly looking into like the moral ambiguities of characters and the gray areas. There's no character in here who seems like wholly good or wholly bad. Um, there's characters who do terrible things to each other and then there's characters who react in terrible ways. And that's kind of referenced in the text about like there's the thing and then there's the context of the thing and the thing can't exist without the context of it um and you know at the center of it is this relationship which you know I, I still can't tell you if i think what i think about that relationship is it a good relationship but i don't think that's what the importance is like there is a lot of tenderness it's also very much as i've said about the relationships between parents and children in a way that is uh, uncomfortable at times definitely but it was very moving um i definitely found the parts about grief very moving the parts about kind of sacrifice and i do think brian washington is a very very good writer so i did really like it i turned down some pages let's see what i turned down yeah there's a lot about um kind of feeling of otherness with the two men specifically mike as someone who kind of spends time in japanese as in japan as someone who is japanese but like isn't because he's american but then in america like isn't japanese and I think that's something that Benson also feels in terms of race. Um, and yeah, even the bits that are beautiful are like very, very melancholy, um, a kind of wistfulness for the past, um, a kind of framing of these romantic relationships, these familial relationships in what they were and kind of are now. Um, so yeah, I think it's a very well written, a very complex novel. I think it is exploring some very interesting things, some very real like emotions. Um, it's hard to know what I'd rate it. It's somewhere on the spectrum of, I guess, a 3.5 to a 4. I feel like there's certain books that are like basically a 3.75 that when I sit with them will either become a 3.5 or a 4. Like it really depends on how much I reflect upon it and think about it. Um, So yeah, I definitely recommend this. It's subtle. It's contemplative. It's very detailed, which I like. It is kind of a little bit detached as I mentioned but it really like delves into things and I'll definitely be reading more from Brian Washington should I like message Han and get her to record a voice note Han do you have anything you'd like to tell the vlog via audio so yeah I haven't incurred the wrath of Hannah with that because I did really like that book it's still a good rating um we'll see if she pops up with any harsh words at any point during this vlog now I didn't charge my Kindle. I didn't charge my Kindle, like I said I would, until I finished work. So that's currently charging 
So I don't know what I'm going to do right now. I can't promise that it's not going to involve a glass of wine. It's been one of those days. But when I pick up Asylum Road, <laughs> you'll be the first to know. Okay, I have a line and Han has something that she wants to say to the blog. Hello to Grace's cult followers. Um, I'm kidding. I like you a lot. Um, so Grace gave it 3.5 or 4. She can't decide, but hear me out if you're thinking about reading memorial and you're kind of on the edge the reason why i think um washington is so smart is because he chooses these really unexpected uh interpersonal relationships to explore like the mother-in-law with son-in-law of a failing um partnership dynamic is so interesting and i think the way he comes at the relationship between mike and benson not at his conception but part way through where they're both flailing to understand each other and what they want and i just think that's quite a refreshing take for a story focusing on relationships because it's not um concerned with the big picture it's more the everyday experiences the not even the explosive arguments it's sort of the the falling out of love with someone i think he nails that um while talking about identity politics queerness uh being black in america and all those other big questions but this sort of flailing relationship is at the center of them and i've just never read a book that uh depicts a relationship quite like that one damn she's smart i actually agree with all of that maybe it is a four anyway i'm very hungry but can hear alex grinding pepper which makes me think food food is coming still haven't picked up asylum road it probably is charged now but i was having one of those days where i just needed to stare into the ether for extended periods of time pasta garlic bread mm. Okay, so clearly I'm in a bad mood. Uh, so I'm having a bath. She running. And then I'm watching CJ's vlog. But then also speaking to CJ in real life. Double CJ, that's what you need to get you through a bad day. This bath be taking too long to run. Um, and I'm way too scared. Like when people film themselves in the bath and it's so tasteful, it's just like a little collarbone. I would definitely go full to accidentally. I have another glass of wine. Um, and I also have a fully charged Kinzel with Asylum Road loaded up onto it. So we're gonna read in the bath because what a delight. I was like, I wanna go to bed. If I go to bed at eight o'clock, I'll wake up at 4 a.m. and have a terrible day. And I was like, bath, bath is bed adjacent. So that's what we're doing. Hello. Um, <laughs> Good one. Hello. Um, <laughs> I had my bath, my bath, and um, I read the first, well, I can't tell you any pages because it was on Le Kindel but it was the first 33% of Asylum Road and I'm really enjoying it. If I had to sum it up in as like an amalgamation of two books, not that anyone asked, I would say it's giving me like Assembly by Natasha Brown, X, The Snakes by Sadie Jones, two books I absolutely loved. Um, it's about a woman called Anya who has a boyfriend who, I hate to say this about every book I read, but is trash called something i can't even remember his name and they live together in london um and at the start of the novel like they're on holiday and he's just being a bit weird but then he proposes to her so then they go back to his family's house in cornwall and his family are like really weird pro brexit obsessed with cornwall and that's where it's giving like the natasha brown vibes like a woman feeling very out of place at her boyfriend's parents and it's just a lot of like undertones of political commentary or just like little digs that they're making and our narrator Anya has like a, I don't know, just like quite sharp observations about like what's happening around her. And then basically they're planning their wedding. Anya is, seems quite troubled and she's like, let's go back and visit my parents because she left Sarajevo when she was a child and her parents stayed there. She was like raised by an aunt in Glasgow. And it seems like she has quite a lot of trauma, obviously from growing up in and kind of escaping the Balkans war and the conflict there. So it's just like a very, precisely written we're very in Anya's mind we're like slowly learning more about her childhood and what happened um but as they're like going they're like driving through Croatia at the minute 
going to visit her parents she's just like super stressed her boyfriend's being super weird and yeah there's just so much like tension and i just love the way it's written the reason it's giving me like the snakes vibes is because because it's like a couple on a road trip and also a couple where one of them has weird parents and very tense and gripping so i'm really enjoying it i'll give some more eloquent thoughts tomorrow on friday but for now GK out. Hello, good morning. Oh, I've got chewing gum in. It's like gonna be really annoying if I'm like loudly chewing properly. Um, happy Friday! It is. Let's sit down. Um, oh, Larry. Larry. Yeah, it's lunchtime on a Friday. Um, and taking a lunch break from work, but I think I'm gonna meet my mum and dad for a coffee or some lunch in the village. But I'm waiting on a parcel for Alex. It's gonna be delivered hopefully soon, but if not, then. I can't leave the house, so that's annoying, but then they might come here, even though I have nothing in the house. So I'm like, oh, I want to come to my lunch, bring the lunch. Bring everything you might need. Yeah, until then, I am going to read a little bit of Asylum Road, but I'm not sure how much I'll get read today, because then, this afternoon, I'm going to a beer festival in Northumberland. The weather's horrible, but beer and food, I'm very excited about it. And then tomorrow we're going to Hull, to go back to Al's mum's. That's fine, I can take my Kindle there. We'll get this book finished at some point, but yeah. We'll read a bit now, but can't promise that today will be a particularly reedy day. Coming to you live from an Asda in Hull. Uh, yeah, I went to the beer festival yesterday. It was a very successful beer festival um, in the sense that I'm now fairly hungover. Um, I've had a McDonald's breakfast and then a KFC because I'm disgusting. I feel like every time I come to Hull, like when we drive to Hull, I'm hungover. Alex's mum probably hates me. She's like, why do you keep bringing this tired bitch? Anywho, um, yeah, we're going to Hull now. We're going to have a barbecue. I mean, the weather's not amazing, but... The thing is, Alex's mum has the sickest, uh, like, shed outbuilding that they've turned into, like, a full pub. I'll see if I can get some footage, like, with, you can pull pints and everything. It's got, like, a pool table in. It's pretty sick. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, I haven't really been reading in the car because a aforementioned hangover, but I got up to the 50% mark in Asylum Road yesterday before I went out. And I'm still really, really enjoying it. It definitely has continued in that style it's very detailed intense and kind of like slow um we're not even so i think i mentioned that like anya and her boyfriend whose name constantly escapes me maybe luke something like that driving to bosnia and they're not there yet they like stopped to meet up with one of anya's old friends or someone she knew in um, montenegro i think but so yeah we're still not kind of at that point and anya has a lot of anxiety around like seeing her parents i believe but um yeah, we're definitely getting a bit more, I guess, background into the impact of like the Balkans conflict and the way that the countries are now. Yeah, like the people who are still really hanging on to the past and then the, and then the people who are the complete opposite um, and the kind of fallout of that. So it is really interesting. I would like to do some maybe like non-fiction reading around that because I don't feel like I know loads about the Balkans war but yeah so I'm really really enjoying the style there's this amazing kind of repeating image um or like a theme where Anya has a phobia of fruit because well you kind of find out why but like a really like visceral reaction to any fruits um which is just described in like a really I don't know it's like makes it really tense and kind of eerie and there's just been some amazing scenes where like something really incongruous and kind of awful happens not like a big thing but like they were driving on the road and then like the road just stopped and there was no road and so it's like it wasn't a big like oh my god we nearly died thing but it's those i don't know really sharp moments of something not being right that's adding to it i also just read at the 50 percent mark a really interesting quote from one of annie's friends who basically is talking about the idea of like bearing witness and like needing people to see what's going on and know what's going on but then she's like what's the point in bearing witness it's just more people watching us die like if there's no i guess it comes back to that thing of like you know educate yourself which i think is obviously valid but it's the idea of like just knowing about something it doesn't necessarily help so yeah very much enjoying it will not be doing any more reading today because obviously the pate p-a-r-t-y because we want it but in the car tomorrow um it's physically impossible to, to be hung over two days in a row so 
I shan't be hungover tomorrow and I think I'll read it and finish it on the car on the way home tomorrow hopefully. Hey Peggle Pop, you're so cute. I love you. <laughs> had a great time in Hull but before we go any further not sure if you were watching my little montage there but you might have noticed uh, that my, one of my teeth was glowing in the dark so that was a nice surprise in the party shed having a great time there's some UV lights there I'm having a chat with one of my friends and then she just goes sorry Grace do you know your tooth glows in the dark and I was like sorry and basically this tooth and part of that one is fake and um, I fell down the stairs um, and yeah that was in 2016. So I've had this fake tooth for five years. I've definitely been around UV light over the past five years and no one, no one's ever told me. So then for the rest of the night, yeah, I was just avoiding the UV light because I looked mental. So that's great. I was also, you might have seen, pulling some pints. It really is like the sickest pub. Um, so yeah, that was really good. And then we came home this afternoon and the weather's actually, it's really quite, well, it was sunny. It's grayed over a bit. Um, and we are, I'm just, I got ready because our lovely friends are, offered to cook us a roast dinner this evening so we're gonna go to the pub and then a roast dinner i mean sounds great so yeah however this morning i woke up really early in bed i actually felt very fresh because as i say my theory it's impossible to be hung over two days in a row i'm sure i have disproved that theory in the past but anyway um and i picked up my kindle and i ended up reading the second half of asylum road just all in one go so i've now finished it um and i did really really like it i think that it was a very astute um, suggestion from Hannah it is a really a me book it has that kind of the tension the eeriness that almost makes it feel like not a thriller but you know those kind of dark undertones overtones the tones were somewhere that I really liked but then also it's like super super literary super slow I would say like it's not plotless but I liked what it did with plot Um, it's kind of meandering I mentioned you know they go to visit Luke's parents and then they go to visit her parents in Bosnia um, and her family and I thought maybe that's where the climax of the novel is going to be but it, it really isn't there isn't really one point of like plot climax like in that way and I really like that it's much more just we're following Anya through life and seeing basically like the the trauma that she is dealing with and I just thought that it was so well done in that way and, and it does have quite a I was interested to see how it was going to end and it does end in quite a um like something happens at the end and I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about it at first it's kind of similar to something else I've read before or read recently I won't say what but I also had mixed opinions on um but I definitely think I did prefer it in that in the context of this novel and I think it really worked um, I think it works really well in terms of like we kind of get to see the culmination over the whole novel of Anya's trauma um, and we never really find out much about um, you know her childhood in Bosnia some of the things that she refers to early on in the book like losing her brother um, and you know being separated from her parents we never get any of that we never get the the scenes of what it must have been like to be evacuated basically sent away from your parents and your country and, and you know raised elsewhere and um, we never get any of that we never really get a lot about her brother we see the impact of this trauma much more than we ever see the kind of what began it and like I talked about the fruit thing um and she kind of has she's just a very very damaged messed up person and to others on the outside you can't really they can't really see that or they can't understand as I said you know I don't know a huge amount about the Balklands conflict and we just see you know it's just Anya this normal girl living her life but actually like it really isn't and she's dealing with so much and I love the tense family scenes when she is back in Bosnia there was like a, an amazing just kind of like anecdotal scene towards the end um that didn't really have a huge amount to do with the plot but it was just so visceral like the writing's amazing and I just thought Annie was a really fascinating character I wanted to get more into her head and, and learn about these things and yeah it was just very very well done all in all and I'll definitely be picking up something else by Olivia Sujic if I think she has other stuff out I don't know if this was a debut but anyway um but yeah was it a five star I don't know it sometimes I feel like the five star just has to have like the five star feel 
but then I think that can be like so dependent on like when you read it, where you read it, how you read it. And so I'm not like, it's 100% a five star, but I'm not also ruling it out because I really can't think of anything that I didn't like about it. I loved that it was so quiet, but so dark. And yeah, it was an absolutely amazing recommendation from Han. I think Washington, I always call Memorial Washington, Memorial by Brian Washington, I think is really like a solid 3.5 into a four, but Asylum Road is so good, so me. Um, so yeah, this was my little very mini testing out of Han's recommendations, but I would say she knows me very well because I really liked a lot in Memorial the writing style she gets me on the writing style and then she got me with the asylum road so yeah i've had a lot of fun doing this please do let me know if you've enjoyed it if you've read any of these books i would love to know obviously i would love if you subscribe you should really go subscribe to hannah if you haven't already instagram my story graph will be linked down below and i'll see you in the next one bye